Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest 10 things you didn't know about video. Alright, it's time to go ahead and bring back this playlist here. Last video I did was a couple of months back. The reason why I'm bringing this playlist back is because there definitely seems to be a lot of traction associated with it. Lots of good views, lots of good engagement, especially with a video I did associated with the world of gnomes that seems to be blowing up a lot. So I thought, why not bring this back here and also feature a video that highlights two popular subjects. In fact, these subjects I actually talked about in a past video a couple of years back. I had to look back the information on there. It was very briefly touched upon, but it was a video that I did back in 2016. So can you believe that? Almost eight years to the day when it comes to that video's timeline. So I thought, why not showcase these two subjects in this popular playlist? And then that way we can talk all about this all at once. Make it one of my longer videos as well, as I was mentioning there within my community playlist. And then see what you guys and gals think. This is going to be my target, by the way, to feature one video a week. One new video, but have it be a longer video with much more detail, much more information. Have it be as a premiere as well, and then see how that goes. That just seems to be the world of YouTube nowadays. That's what they seem to prioritize, in other words. So, this video, this 10 things you know didn't know about, has to do with this. 10 things you didn't know about Bigfoot with UFOs. That's right. It's the idea that UFOs and Bigfoot, Sasquatch, even Yetis, are all in one. In other words, they each have to do with each other either directly or indirectly. So I found 10 interesting things to feature here, 10 interesting bits of trivia as well. I don't recall these actually being mentioned in my other video. The other one was more on the lines of an encounter. This one though has to do with trivia, with bits of information here and there. So again, 10 things you didn't know about Bigfoot with UFOs. I'm going to feature them in no real order in terms of importance, just number 1 through 10. And then at the end, I'm going to showcase several minutes of some purported uh, sightings associated with the subject. So in other words, photographs and other things that people have captured out there too as a nice little treat out there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's start with number 1, and it is this. Number one, it has been theorized that this is the reason why Bigfoot, Sasquatch, and Yetis, how they all continue to elude capture, and in terms of major sightings, despite the fact, of course, that nowadays people just live almost anywhere, not just here in the United States, but throughout the world as well. The reason why they elude so much capture and sightings is because apparently they're using UFOs as their means of travel. That's right. That's the main theory. That's the biggest one associated with the world of Bigfoots with UFOs. It's the idea that that's their mode of transportation. That's why they can essentially never ever be found. It's the notion that if you try to do find them, they just simply hop on to their nearest UFO and then that's it. They are gone. In other words, the UFO is their quote-unquote car. It is their method of transportation. They are the ones navigating the UFOs, not the aliens, not the greys that are out there. Those are the ones that are actually being manned by Bigfoot, by Sasquatch, and by Yetis. That's why if you try to find them out there somewhere, especially here in the United States, maybe out there in some large foresty area, if you try to do so, you're going to have a very hard time to do so because of the technology associated with their UFOs and their ability to travel away, uh, travel away at amazing speeds. This also highlights another mini theory as to why none of their bodies have ever been found. Obviously, with humans, when they end up becoming deceased one way or another, there's graveyards, there's bones that are found, stuff like that. So why, if there's a whole other society associated with, say, Bigfoot out there in the modern world, how come we've never found one single carcass? No bones, nothing at all. Again, it ties into the world of UFOs. It's the idea that they're using those items, they just simply 
take their deceased with them in their UFO and then travel away wherever that is. So anything involving evidence linked to them, it's just simply gone to a mode of transportation that takes them to someplace else that we'll never ever see. And that's essentially why no bodies have ever, ever been found. Pretty interesting theory. I have to say that this makes in a weird way, a lot more sense when you think about it that way. Although, as I'll point out in some of the other items, some of the other 10 things you didn't know about, the link between a Bigfoot and UFOs is actually more either sinister or more on the lines of them being victims. Again, you'll find out more here on just a minute. But again, that's the biggest theory as to why the two are linked together. That is their mode of transportation. Interesting stuff. Number two is this, the history associated with Bigfoot and UFOs goes back a long time. In fact, it's even longer than what I'm about to mention, but at least one of the first reported known entries, one of the first reports in and of itself, happened in 1888. This was apparently there in Northern California, and it occurred between a group of cattle ranchers and a group of Native Americans. That's when the cattle ranchers were there with the Native Americans discussing what had just happened apparently somewhere and that's when the natives described this they mentioned encounters with three quote-unquote crazy bears that ended up descending from the sky in what they called a small moon and then when that happened when these three again crazy bears landed that's when this small moon took off so if you take that description on a more literal basis and then apply it to the world of bigfoot and ufos the crazy bears are the actual Bigfoot, right? You would think that it would be something where the Native Americans could easily discern what a bear looks like compared to something else. They didn't have a description for what these things were, so for lack of a better term, they seem to describe them as crazy bears. And then when it comes to small moons, you could just easily imagine the, the, the illumination of a UFO looking like a small moon. So in their case, having these type of encounters in 1888, that was happening since way back when with the Native Americans. But again, that was with those cattle ranchers, at least with that time. So you could also imagine that even before the cattle ranchers were even there, the Native Americans, who knows how many hundreds of years back, were having similar encounters too. They in turn were seeing the world of big Bigfoot with UFOs together in one, and they were just describing them in these very, very simple metaphors. But still, both of them seem to link one another in terms of the illustrations. If you paint the crazy bears and the small moons as Bigfoot and UFO, then you have an idea of how the two of them are linked together. Interesting stuff. So, and then also with the idea that it's been happening up until this more present day, more on that in another entry in just a few minutes, you'll see more on that why. Number three is this. The number of UFO sightings with Bigfoot is actually much higher than anticipated. This actually caught me by surprise because when I was looking at some information for this video, I thought it was going to be just a small percentage. I mean, what are the odds, right, that you have these two factors in one that they take up a large percentage? But apparently they do. Get this. The actual percentage of sightings of Bigfoot correlating with UFOs is 20%. And th what this means is not exactly like seeing both of them at the same time, more on the lines of seeing, let's say, UFOs and then people encountering Bigfoots around those areas and vice versa. A whopping 20% of the time, that's what's occurring. So one-fifth of the time, whenever someone sees a UFOs, there's a good chance that there's also going to be Bigfoot around. And it's interesting because I actually know of a location here in the Texas area, more on that here in just a moment too, where it actually ties together. There is a location, a park that I know of that I'm going to try to visit sometime soon so that way I can stay overnight that has that very, very nice correlation. So again, the number of sightings is much, much higher than anticipated. 
much higher than I expected. Let me know if you guys and gals believe with that at theory too, that the inter that the actual percentage of it uh, is 20%. Number four is this, talking about theories about the links between Bigfoots and UFOs, there's this. Remember how I was just mentioning a few minutes back that the UFOs are their modes of transportation? Well, how about this? What if the Bigfoots are actually victims of ufos that's actually a theory from a guy by the name of jack carey who is a cryptozoologist he states that the average bigfoot is a victim of ufos much like we human ours in other words we are abductees to ufos and according to him so are bigfoots they are abductees to ufos meaning there they are living just ordinary lives out there in the forest there they are just trying to mind their own business hide from humans hide from civilization while at the same time having their own civilization as well and then lo and behold here comes a ufo to take them away and then much like us humans who don't stand a chance when it comes to that such is the case with the Bigfoot. They're not able to escape. They're abducted on these UFOs. They're taken away, who knows, to be scientifically conducted on. And then once that happens, then they're brought back and then they're just left as is. Kind of eerie, kind of creepy when you think about it because people, anytime someone then sees, let's say, a Bigfoot around a UFO and so on, it may be this. It may be that the Bigfoot are not part of the ufos they're just average victims they're just trying to stay away from the ufos but the aliens and the greys within them want to study them as much as they want to study humans and so they end up abducting them and again there's not a single thing they can do about that creepy stuff but again that's another theory linked to it what do you guys think on that is that a more prominent theory uh when it comes to the world of bigfoot with ufos or is the idea instead that that is their mode of transportation, that that is directly them driving those things? Is that more of a popular theory there? Let me know. Number five is this. This one is a much longer one, but there's good info to state. If you can believe this, the CIA has actually officially investigated this matter. So you have to go back to the 1960s there at an area called Presque Isle State Park there at an area called Erie, Pennsylvania, to see this happen. If you go around those parts, there's Lake Erie, and then there's a location there called Presque Isle Bay. Well, apparently there, on July 31st, 1966, four tourists randomly found their car stuck in the sand there. I don't know how long they were stuck there, but it seemed like it go into the night. And so when that happened, one of them had actually left to go get a tow truck by then. The three other ones stayed behind. Eventually, two police officers doing their rounds around that location came by, checked up on them, saw and heard that one of them had gone to go get a tow truck. And so they said they're going to continue to do their rounds, but they'll be back in an hour to check again. And so when they did so and they came back, that's when they heard that the group actually saw something new. They said, quote unquote, they saw something weird going on up there, pointing towards a wooded area. And so one of the members decided to go to that wooded area now that the two officers were back. The three of them went together to investigate. Again, the two officers with one of the tourists. But while they were about 300 yards away, almost to that area in of itself, that's when they heard behind them the repeated honking of the car that they were just leaving. Apparently, whoever was there was now honking their car in a hurried fashion, like, in other words, trying to get them to come back. And so they did so, scurrying back as much as possible. And then that's when two of the tourists said they saw a, quote-unquote, dull black shape bigger than a man, with big head and shoulders, arm-like appendages, no hands, no face visible, and so as if his face has its back turned, they saw it for just a few moments there in front of their car before it ran into the bushes after they started blaring their horn. So again, if you could believe that timeline, 
pretty much the moment that one of the tourists with the two cops ended up going away to investigate one of the wooded areas. That's when apparently one of these Bigfoot decided to go there into that car, and then that's when they started blaring their horn. It didn't seem like this Bigfoot did anything necessarily bad. It just happened to be, I guess curious maybe even studying them but even then once it heard that horn being blared it ran off but they also heard that there was a scratching sound on the roof of the car and then as they saw it hurry away that's when they saw another thing they saw what they described as a ufo they considered it an angular craft it was emitting this red and orange lights and it was descending towards the beach shortly after this bigfoot had gone away from the car into the wooded areas but what was most interesting was this this ufo then emitted a beam of white light that ended up trying to track something in the woods so if you add those two together it was almost like the ufo was trying to pick up the bigfoot and if you add that together it was almost like the bigfoot was trying to summon the ufo to get out of there that's the impression that i got when i was reading this information because what else could it be? There was the Bigfoot trying to escape that location, and then it summoned the UFO. The UFO emitted that beam of white light. It looked to them like it ended up getting something. They didn't see what it was, but this white light ended up getting it, and then when that happened, they saw it speed away at incredible speeds, never ever to be seen again. If you're wondering what happened later on, it was this. The following morning, the police came back. They investigated that area. They went to that location location that they pro, um, let's say put in terms of a approximation of that white light and where it was hitting downward and then that's where they saw that there was these unusual triangular marks that ended up making almost like a quote-unquote landing zone and so they theorized that this is where the ufo ended up picking up the Bigfoot. And then the CIA actually ended up investigating these claims after the police did so. They, in turn, were not able to come up with any conclusive answer. In fact, they were baffled at the claims that were being made at the time, but they weren't dismissing them either because, again, multiple reports from multiple witnesses were pretty much saying the same things as well. And if you want to take it an even step further, is this, this case ended up being a part of Project Blue Book. You've heard of that uh, infamous um, a criteria, right? As far as Project Blue Book and all the cases that they ended up investigating. Unfortunately, though, Project Blue Book ended up dismissing this as a hoax. That was at least their official I guess, answer to this. But otherwise, all the other information, including the idea that it was investigated by police officers and eventually the CIA, all of it tied in again into the world of Bigfoot's whiff UFOs. Very, very strange and bizarre encounter that happened there back in 1966. If you want to go there again, it's located at the Prescue Isle State Park in Erie, Pennsylvania. Who knows, maybe you might have a chance to see something similar out there too. Number six is this. I was teasing it a couple of minutes back. It's the idea that here in Texas, there is an area there, a state park, that has the world of Bigfoot with UFOs in one. And if you wanted to throw in something else, how about ghosts as well? It's called Palmetto State Park, which you're looking at here. This is a picture that I took of when I visited there for a very short time period. It's located just nearby Gonzales, Texas. Um, if you wanted to go over there, you can even stay overnight if you wanted to. Um, it's a huge, huge park, just hundreds and hundreds of acres just out there of just nothing, just nothing but pure wilderness, both forested and then also open uh, land. In fact, when I was there and just standing at a corner point that oversees almost the entire area, you could see cattle just grazing somewhere out there within that vast empty land. Well, apparently this land there, again nearby Gonzales, Texas, it houses not only ghosts, you can see ghosts, you can also feel them around that location too, but it also has UFOs and Bigfoot. So if you stay out there in those cabins where you can actually rent out for either one night or several nights if you want, I've looked into it as well, uh, me and the group that I'm in in terms of our ghost hunting group, but they always seem to be sold out. They're sold out like months ahead of time, so it's kind of hard to plan that, right? How do you plan a vacation 
six months ahead of time, not knowing essentially what's going to happen during those six months up until that point. So we haven't gone out there yet, but if you have more luck and you're able to do so, you can actually rent those cabins out. Be sure to stay overnight because that's when apparently you can see UFOs up there in the sky. Um, it's going to be crystal clear. It's going to be 100% no city lights. So you're going to see star lights galore, but you're also going to see UFOs up there. And on top of that, people have seen large, massive, hairy creatures, Bigfoot-like creatures, in other words, roaming about those locations, which again ties into the notion that they would be around that forested area. It is near Gonzales, Texas again, but it's not close. Um, you would have to still drive a little bit of ways. So everything in between is nothing but those forested areas. So definitely a good location to have Bigfoots around. And if again, you believe the theory that they're using UFOs as a mode of transportation, then why not have UFO sightings out there too? It is our bucket list. We do want to go out there. We do want to see and stay overnight, see if we could capture all three, capture video footage of ghosts, also UFOs, and then also Bigfoots. I don't know though how... Um, strict they are there when it comes to roaming around that area just for the brief time that we were there we saw a lot of signs that says do not go beyond this point type stuff but i don't know how well those signs go like in terms of distance or if they're enforced stuff like that if someone has stayed there before at the palmetto state park uh, let me know post it in the comments below Number seven is this. We were just talking about a few minutes ago about the CIA investigating this this uh, topic of Bigfoot with UFOs. Well, how about this? The FBI has also done something similar, and they've been tracking this since 1976. It all started apparently when a director by the name of Peter Bryan over at the Bigfoot Information Center and Exhibition sent 15 hairs to study for them to study because he was baffled as to what they were linked to. I don't know where he essentially he found these hairs. Someone pointed out in the comments below if you have more information on that. But when he tried to find out what they were linked to, he couldn't. So he sent them in to the FBI uh, to see what they were able to say. They actually responded. The FBI's Scientific and Technical Services Division did write back stating that they normally only examine physical evidence involved with criminal investigations. But because of this uh, particular set of circumstances, they decided to make an exception. They did it in quote unquote, the interest of research and scientific inquiry. So they did look into those hairs to see what they were linked to, and then cut to about a year later in 1977, and the results were found out. It actually was a little bit of a, uh, it wasn't as exciting as can be, in other words. Uh, things were overinflated from the beginning. It was actually of deer family origin. So nothing. Uh, out of this world when it comes to those 15 hairs, nothing linked to the world of cryptids. They're simply linked and tied to the world of deers. And in fact, um, if you wanted to spin this another way, at least some enthusiasts have, it's this. Yes, they could be tied into the world of deers, but a lot of you, I'm sorry, a lot of Bigfoot enthusiasts state that this is an endorsement that the Bigfoot is real because otherwise... Why would the FBI have investigated it? If they in turn didn't believe that Bigfoot was real, they would have just declined it. That's at least according to their theory. But the fact that they investigated it signals to them that they know that the Bigfoot is real. This was evidence that they were trying to link to it. It didn't end up being as such, but they still investigated it. And how this links into the world of UFOs is this. They claim, those same uh, Bigfoot enthusiasts state, it's much like U.S. military investigating sightings of unexplained aerial phenomenon in a way as them accepting that UFOs must be real. Otherwise, why would they be investigating that unexplained phenomenon if they knew what it was? So in other words... They believe that UFOs are real, and so in turn, the FBI must believe that Bigfoots are real. Do you believe that theory? I don't know. That's kind of a little bit of a strange link, but let me know what you guys and gals think in the comments below on that. Number eight is this, and again, this ties into a lot of my earlier points when it comes to the world 
a Bigfoot with UFO sightings. I was mentioning at the very big uh, towards the very beginning how it dates back one of the first reported ones to 1888, but I was mentioning how it actually dates to modern times, to today. Well, apparently there's been an uptick in Bigfoot and UFO sightings. Remember I was mentioning earlier too how about 20% of these sightings are linked to those two and one. Well, apparently there's more and more sightings of them too. In fact, one of the largest known sightings is happens to be at Native American reservation land. In particular, you would have to go to the Navajo Nation, which encompasses about 27,000 total square miles. That's where a lot of the people there, a lot of the natives, a lot of the citizens state that they see quote unquote dark intruders on their private property. They're described as being seven or eight feet tall. They're described as being muscular. They have canine teeth. They have the smell of a wet dog. And they've been known to not only steal and kill their livestock, but also raid their gardens and then be cited for other general problems. And then on top of that, anytime they've seen these Bigfoot in and around their location, they have also seen UFOs linked to them as well. So if you want to, again, go to a location that happens to have a larger amount of these two-in-one sightings, that's where you would go to. Go to the Navajo Nation. I don't know if there's other Native American reservation land out there that happens to have similar uptick in sightings. Let me know. Those of you that live on the reservations, if you have more information on that, post it in the comments too. But those coincide with one another and it all leads to an increase in the number of percentage of sightings. Interesting stuff. And then number nine is this, when it comes to the world of Bigfoots with UFOs. Uh, earlier, we were talking about UFOs looking almost like silver moons, almost like classic UFOs. In other words, how about this? What if they look like orange orbs? So another thing linked, another bit of trivia associated with these sightings is that Bigfoots are using orange orbs in order to teleport themselves away. And here's what I mean. People that have seen these orange orbs tend to see them around sightings of Bigfoot. They're described as fast-moving lights, almost alien in nature. They're again seen in areas that have been linked with Bigfoots, and they have been described as being multidimensional portals. In other words, think of it more in the lines of a transporter beam. There's this orange light. You could just imagine a Bigfoot step into it, and then it's gone. Both of them are gone. In other words, the orange light and the Bigfoot are gone to be teleported somewhere else. And in fact, there's a guy by the name of Bill Penning who described this theory. He said so as much. He stated that during a hunt there in West Virginia, he was tracking Bigfoot somewhere around the location. He heard something rather large shake the ground around him. This was there again in the woods, but it vanished too quickly for him to see it. He had no chance to actually see what it was. But he did find two sets of tracks associated with it. One of them was very, very large in terms of whatever this was, presumably a Bigfoot. And then the other one was much smaller and he could identify it. This one actually belonged to a deer. And the way these tracks moved about, it made it seem to indicate that the deer was being chased by these large prints, by the Bigfoot, in other words. But what caught things even more curious was this. There was at a certain point that the tracks suddenly disappeared. Like all of a sudden they ended at one point and then weren't seen going anywhere else. This is where the orange orbs come into play because the partner associated with uh, that gentleman, Bill Penning, a guy by the name of Ronnie DeBlanc, who was also there on the hunt, said that he saw orange orbs around that location, and the two have been, been linked. It's the idea that the, you, that the actual Bigfoots were using these set of orange orbs to transport themselves away, and that could explain why these tracks suddenly disappeared. That's why um, these Bigfoots can essentially be, at one point to another, being even though they're being tracked, actually hunted by people they're never ever found afterward what do you guys think on that is there a theory on that is that one that you've heard as well in your area involving ufos looking like orange orbs uh let me know as well too and then finally the very final interesting thing you didn't know about the world of bigfoots with ufos is this we talked earlier about the notion 
that Bigfoots use UFOs for transportation. Then we've talked about the idea that Bigfoots are victims of UFOs, i.e. abductees when it comes to the world of aliens and greys. Well, here's a third theory. They're also apparently captured workers for the aliens and the UFOs. So again, more on the lines of them being a victim, but it's this. The Bigfoots are extraterrestrial in a sense. They may have come from another place. They are in turn transported here by the aliens, by the UFOs. They're dropped off throughout multiple parts of the world, but they're told to essentially capture what's needed for the aliens slash greys. And then once that happens, then the UFOs come pick them up and then they're able to get those items that they were told to capture. So they could be livestock, they could be human beings, they could be other Bigfoots as well. Whatever it is, the Bigfoots themselves are captured workers. They have to do the bidding of their uh, employers, if you will, If and when it comes to these aliens and these greys. They're not doing this out of their own free will. They're essentially tied to them as captured workers. And then once that happens, they're both picked up and left off, picked up and left off, and the cycle continues. So interesting stuff. What do you guys think on that? That's another third theory as to the link associated with the two of them together. But otherwise, that's it. Those are the 10 items. 10 things you didn't know about Bigfoots with UFOs. Let me know what you guys and gals think about each of them. Post them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts and opinions are on this too. And if by any chance any more information I might have missed, uh, something else that stands out that's interesting, maybe another point that you'd like to hear, um, post it in the comments below as well. Otherwise, I'm going to leave just a few minutes here of interesting Footage, video, not video, but images, stuff captured that showcases uh, these two worlds in one. And then that way you'll get to see them throughout the rest of the video here. All right, everyone. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.